We're headed north, deep into the jungle near the River Kwai, on the border with what used to be called Burma, but is now Myanmar. This region is second only to Afghanistan when it comes to heroin trade, and gun battles still break out between smugglers and Thai security forces. But we were on our way to the camp of Kru Prang, master of a secretive form of Muay Thai called Chaya. I feel like we're infiltrating a ninja camp. Thailand is 95% Buddhist, so we weren't surprised when Kru Prang welcomed us to his camp with a traditional Buddhist ceremony. He accepts you as his student. Master Priang is a little pit bull. You can tell right away. I mean, he's very reverent and he is very calm, but you can tell behind those eyes, he's a fighter. How do the techniques that are used in Muay Thai Chaya differ from techniques we see when we see two guys fighting in a ring? The Thai boxing nowadays that you see the ring spot. They only took a little part of us. You know, it's washed out to almost nothing nowadays. Most of our technique, you know, is used to harm a person, to take them down so fast. That's a battlefield fight. And one of the first things we learned was that in a battlefield fight, a good defense makes a great offense. Wow. Yeah. The defensive abilities of Muay Thai Chai technique are uh, pretty much all elbows. And they use them as they're striking as well. I can barely see one of those things come. Notice how they finish off the opponent every time they throw them? Right. It'll just keep them down there. Every time they're, they're catching something, they're giving something back. They're not just, you know, it's not just like one guy's attacking and one guy's defending. It's like they're both constantly attacking. I mean, you know, it's so quick to do that. I mean, you have, it's just so much to think about. And that's the end of the fight. In the ring spot, when a person punch and you try to move back, and you try to return the punch, it's too late. Basically what he's saying is, as he sees the other guy move, he's stepping in first and blocking and coming with the elbow. Instead of moving off the punch like this, it's too late because he'll be away from your punch. Mm -hmm. So when he comes in, bang, bang, he's hitting him with the elbow. Kru Prang taught me that the one thing you never do as far as his style is concerned is back off. Oh. Hey. A lot of places we went, like Fairtex and Sarbury, there was a lot of defense. There was a lot of backing off, shucking and jiving, you know, Muhammad Ali type movements. There was none of that here. It was straight aggression, straight ahead. Even their defensive moves could be considered an offensive move because if the guy doesn't get out of the way, he's gonna catch an elbow right in the throat. But normally, each strike we would block with elbow. Defender hurt more than the defender. That was really intense. I can't believe how fast those guys move. Yeah, they're a lot faster than me and a lot faster than you, unfortunately for us. When we step into the ring against the champion, I think we can take this, uh, put it together with everything we've learned. But you're feeling a lot more confident than I am. Later that night, Kru Pring told us the story of Nai Kanam Tom and how he used Muay Thai to change history. I will tell you about a small part of Thai history. Two hundred more years ago, a farmer from Singbuli got captured by the Burmese soldier. They took him to Burma and made a slave out of him. In history, say, he performed uh, ancient Thai boxing and can knock off ten Burmese boxer in front of the Burmese king. He used his Mai Mai Muay Thai to knock them off. And he can knock 
each Burmese boxer by single strike. They call him Nai Kanom Tom, the Thai fighter. After winning his fights, Nai Kanom Tom was freed by the Burmese king. He returned to the Siamese capital of Ayutthaya and spent the rest of his life teaching Muay Thai. He became known as the father of Muay Thai and really created what is today Thailand's most famous sport. Inspired by the story, we arose at dawn and headed off to meet Kru Priang. Uh, come down here and he's already up doing an hour of Tai Chi on the rock. Working with Kru Prang and learning the Chaya techniques is such a beautiful environment, yet it's so violent and he is so strong. Such a small man to have so much power. And Muay Thai Chaya training was as different from training in the States as you could imagine. Over the next few days, Jason and I were introduced to the traditional methods of Muay Thai training. We kicked banana trees to toughen our shins. Dodged lemons to improve our accuracy. Chopped leech infested waters to avoid blinking. and practiced meditation to clear our minds. I feel like a piece of meat at this point. I've been beaten and prodded and bitten by every bug out here. I think I'm learning things that I'll be able to put into use and that are practical. But the environment, as aesthetically pleasing as it is, is not fun to train here. I feel like we've been kind of shopping at grocery stores. We've been kind of picking some of this fruit, some of this, some of that, some of that. And uh, I feel like Master Prang is kind of the cook that's able to congeal everything together. I think I'm ready. 